before I explain it, I want you uh, to do an exercise. Yeah? Would you like um, to do uh, an exercise to learn the instant focusing technique? And yes, the instant focusing technique, we could call it, uh, an, we could say that it's another name for central fixation. It's a way to realize how our central fixation works. Okay, so how does this instant focusing technique work? It's very simple. So you're going to make a little hole with your finger, very, very small, like uh, as small as the head of a, of a pin for um, sewing. And uh, you're going to close one eye and you're going to look through this little hole. Mm -hmm. You can look first around how well you see, how when you can focus letters of different sizes. Uh -huh. And now look through the little hole and see how well you can focus. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're supposed to do this without glasses, without contacts. Remove everything, anything that you would have in front of your eyes and look through the little hole. Mm -hmm. And notice how sharp, how crisp, how well you can focus. Yeah, how well you can see. I would like to see in the chat uh, saying, you saying, what has changed when you look through the little hole? How well do you see now that you look through the little hole? Mm -hmm. So, Nigo, that's amazing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. How are you seeing through the little hole? And now, while I'm seeing the comments arrive, because sometimes there's a little difference in time, I'm going to explain the reason why um, these instant focusing techniques work so well. Well, first of all, seeing through the little hole without glasses, without contacts, it's just showing you how well you see with your eye. Uh -huh. It's a capacity that you already have. Mm -hmm. You can see at least that well, and we can improve it also. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so if you're seeing really, really well through the little hole, then um, you have the capacity to see that well. If you train yourself, if you train how you use your eyes, if you train your eyesight, you have the capacity to see that well all the time. But it requires new habits of how you use your eyes, yeah? So uh, Juniper is like, wow. Um, um, Monica is saying, I can't read the monitor without doing it, but I can definitely read it with a little hole technique. Absolutely. Juniper also, crystal clear, and I can read, and I'm 95. Wow, amazing. I can read the entire screen without glasses. Uh -huh. before, the chat, before that, the chat was just blurred without glasses on. So you have the capacity to see that well because you are seeing that well without glasses, without contacts. Mm -hmm. So this is very good news for you. And it means that if you learn the techniques, if you practice, if you get new habits, if you practice, if you learn natural vision um, improvement, you can see with your own eyes. You have just proven that to yourself at this moment. So why does this work? Mm -hmm. Because of... Um, foveal vision or because of central fixation in the terms of um, uh, William Bates. So what is foveal vision? Well, in the, anatomy, in the anatomy of the eye, even if this is a, an approximation, so this would be an eyeball, we have the cornea in front of the iris and the pupil, and in between the cornea and the iris and the pupil, there's the aqueous humor, and behind there's the crystalline, and the aqueous humor goes to the crystalline, and behind the crystalline that is about here, there's the vitreous humor, mm -hmm. all of that is transparent. And then we reach the retina mm -hmm, that is at the back of the eye. And the retina is covered by uh, cells that are sensitive to light. And there's two kinds. There's the rods and the cones. The rods are covering most of the peripheral view, the peripheral retina, yeah? And the rods are sensitive uh, to movement and are sensitive to light. They can capture differences in intensity of light. So the rods allow us to see with very dim light and they would see, well, the shades of gray, yeah? Now, at night, when there's little light, uh, we see everything kind of grayish uh -huh, between, yeah, black and white. That's because the rods, only the rods are active. Mm -hmm. When we have more light, 
the cones are active. And there's cones a little bit um, in all over the retina, but uh, there's less in the peripheral view. And as we get to our central vision, the one that's directly in front of the pupil in the fovea, which is a small part of the macula, mm -hmm. that's two millimeters and two millimeters, while the macula is about five millimeters and a half. Uh -huh. um, so the fovea that has the size of the pinhole, yeah, the fovea has the most accumulation of cones. And cones can allow us to see details and cones allow us to see colors. Mm -hmm. So cones can allow us to see red, green, and blue, and combinations of those make up uh, our perception of all the other colors. Yes, so actually our central vision, our foveal vision, is as small as the tip of uh, a pen. Yeah, like what I'm showing, or as the little hole that we're making. So when we're looking through a little hole, we're actually becoming aware of how good our central vision already is. And the reason why we're not experiencing that quality of uh, that crisp, uh, that quality of focusing in our everyday life is because we don't move our eyes enough and we don't look at details enough. Mm -hmm. There's a difference in how good people who see well use their eyes and how people who don't see well use their eyes. And if you look at me while I'm giving this explanation, you probably notice that I'm blinking quite often, but also I don't stop moving my eyes. I'm looking at lots of details at the same time. Some people would say if you're doing a talk uh, on the internet and you're teaching a class, you should be looking at the camera because then the people have the impression you're looking into their eyes and you're making connection and avoid blinking so that the connection is there. But if you do that, you're not taking good care of your eyes. Your eyes need to be paying attention to little details and need to be moving very often. Our eyes have a natural movement, the saccadic movement, that is actually taking care of little details all the time. And we want to encourage that movement, not inhibit it. We want to encourage the movement. So the more you pay attention at little details, and if you're looking in the face of someone, you can go from one eye to the other, to the nose, to the eyebrow, to the ear, to uh, the mouth. You can be looking at the face of the person, but keep changing the details that you're looking in the face. And then you're looking at different distances and you're looking at details. And then you get used uh, uh, to this movement. And then your mind, because it has memory and imagination, it can, it can add all the pixels of maximum quality that you captured with your foveal vision, yeah? So when you are in the sun, because your pupil gets much smaller, because there's so much light, your pupil is already doing this foveal vision, this instant focusing technique effect. Uh -huh. So the rays of, this, uh, of light are also more perpendicular uh, to your retina, so you see much better. Yes? So I hope this is much more clear now and why being in the sun is also another, uh, another reason why being in the sun is a good idea. And now I'm going to introduce to you, with the help of Sandra, a tool that you can use as a substitute for sunglasses, as a substitute for prescription glasses in many cases, maybe not all cases, but in many cases, and as a transition and training tool when you want to improve your eyesight naturally. And thank you, Juniper. I'm very happy that you consider the explanation very clear. Okay, and uh, before we introduce that uh, tool, I'm going to answer to Tida. So why is it that uh, our eyes are getting so tired after a day behind the computer? So one thing is probably, maybe you're not moving your eyes enough, probably you're not blinking enough because we forget to blink at the computer. And probably you're looking at the same distance all the time and you want to look beyond the computer further in the room to the furthest corners of the room or even better, through an open window so that you look at different distances. So if you blink, breathe, move your eyes and look far away, uh, you will not be as tired. And of course, you can also use the, uh, the virtual filter and the physical filter that I mentioned earlier. So free virtual filter, f.lux and uh, um, um, physical filter. Now, would you like to um, know this um, this tool that you can use to um, um, as a substitute for sunglasses, in many cases for as a substitute for prescription glasses, 
and as a training and transition to when you are improving your eyesight. Yes, ta -da 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 -da, the pinhole glasses. Okay, so the pinhole glasses have already in them the little holes that we were looking through because, well, as if when you go to the street, you probably don't want to go like this. <laughs> yeah, it would, it would be very comfortable um, and uh, you probably need to use your hands for many things. So can you show them again, the pinhole glasses closer mm -hmm. to the camera? So, oh, you just got froze. Oh, there you are. So as you see, there are glasses that are made out of plastic, mm -hmm. a dark piece of plastic, and they have holes in the plastic. Uh, and there's no lens, there's nothing, there's just holes. So because they're dark plastic, they can function as a substitute, you can wear them on if you want, as a substitute of sunglasses. Mm -hmm. So the advantage of the pinhole glasses compared to the sunglasses is that on the one hand, they do remove a lot of the extra light if it's bothering, but they still let in the full spectrum of light. Uh -huh. So you still synthesize vitamin D, you're still informed of the intensity of the light, so you still have the advantages of being in contact with sunlight. Mm -hmm. And how do they work as a substitute of prescription glasses? Well, because of the um, foveal vision or the central fixation or, or the stenopaic effect, when you look through these little holes, you're becoming aware of your foveal vision, so you're becoming aware of how well you see Mm -hmm. And then you train your brain to pay attention to this little pixel of good uh, eyesight, to the central fixation. They train the central fixation. And you also will want to look through the little holes, through the different little holes. And in this way, you're actually moving your eyes more instead of moving them less, which is what usually happens with the normal glasses. In normal prescription glasses, only the center of the lens has the proper um, uh, the proper curve of the lens to make you see well at a certain given distance. So your eye has to move very little to see well through the center of the glass. So actually prescription glasses are inhibiting the saccadic movements. That's one of the reasons, another reason why I'm asking you to wear prescription glasses or reading glasses as little as possible in the process of improving your eyesight naturally. And again, with common sense. If you're driving, you don't want to wear pinhole glasses. It would be dangerous. If you're driving, maybe you need the, the normal glasses. Uh -huh. um, if you're doing something specific, maybe like reading, accounting, maybe the pinhole glasses can help you for that. But if you're going to, I don't know, chop something with a big knife, probably you want to wear these because we don't want you to cut any fingers or anything. Uh -huh. So maybe you want to have the, the full view. But in, in general, wear these as little as possible so that you let the eyes have the movement and all the good habits that you need so that your eyes adapt to seeing well again. Mm -hmm. And the pinhole glasses, when to use them and when not to use them. So you can use the pinhole glasses um, so as a substitute for sunglasses in many occasions. You can use the pinhole glasses for reading, for working at the computer, for going to the movies or the theater, to watching, for watching TV. You can use them to move around in known places. I would not, so I tell you not to use them if you're driving because they cover too much of the peripheral view, so that would be dangerous. And uh, if you use them with little light, like at night, you won't see much because it requires light to go through the holes also. Um, and for your foveal vision, and the, the foveal vision doesn't have rods, so, uh, um, at night, they're not very useful. And do not use them uh, if you're using dangerous tools. Yeah, you want to have your full visual field. Mm -hmm. So not for driving, not in the dark, not with dangerous tools. But otherwise, you can use them in many cases as a substitute of sunglasses and as a substitute for um, the other prescription or reading glasses. Um, you can also use them as a training tool uh -huh, because of how they um, make you aware of the foveal vision and how they encourage the saccadic movements. Mm -hmm. So you may want to use them 5, 10, 15 minutes a day as a practice. You may want to use them when you're doing the activities that would require them, like reading or being at the computer instead of um, the other glasses. Yeah? Want to add something about your experience with the pinhole glasses, Sandra? 
They were great at the beginning for a substitute for sun sun glasses because uh -huh. at the beginning, well, as I had light sensitivity, I was like a vampire. I would go outside and oh, I need to cover my. Uh -huh. So I would wear caps, and I started off with my pinhole glasses. And as I know, I said they're great for focusing, so they're a really good training tool. Yes, and the advantage of the pinhole glasses is that they. They work well for you if you're nearsighted or if you're farsighted, and they also work well for astigmatism and w instead of the reading glasses. So they work for all kinds of symptoms. And you can find them very, very cheap on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, you have them for as cheap as $1 to $5 a pair. You can go on different websites. And nowadays you have many different fashionable models. So you can find actually pretty pinhole glasses. Um, and well, then there's some more sophisticated ones that you can pay 30 or 45 or 50 some dollars per pair. But even those are cheaper than, um, for example, um, how do you call them now? Um, progressive glasses. Progressive glasses are a lot more expensive. Like any pair of pinhole glasses is probably cheaper than about any pair of reading or prescription glasses, yeah? So that's a good tip, a good trick that you can uh, take for yourself. Um, and, um, et voila. So um, we're teaching all of these because these are really the very basics of natural vision improvement. And we want for everybody to know this and to practice and use this to improve their eyesight for free. This should be taught in school.